Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed severe weather forecast for the next few days as there could be a multi-day severe weather event slash outbreak consisting of very large to giant hailstones, damaging winds, and strong tornadoes. We're not done with severe weather season, and that's why we are making a video on today's update. So to start off the video, here's a look at the HRRR model over Texas, because today and tomorrow, there is going to be some big hailstones, possibly three to four inches in diameter, that could lead to a lot of damage. We're also looking at tornadoes, some of which could be strong, and damaging winds that ex could exceed 75. So this is a look at the HRRR for this afternoon, and we can see a few multi-cell and supercellular structures really developing along that dry line across western Texas. That's just been kind of the theme over the last day or so, and that's going to be the theme today and tomorrow, as you'll see here. By this afternoon, like right around, say, 7 o'clock Central Daylight Time, we have some very intense supercells with one supercell here that has the reflectivity values greater than 70 decibels. That storm right there could be the storm that generates three to four inch hailstones. Yes, that is very large. That will do a lot of damage and cause a lot of injuries. We could even see some splitting supercells today as well because of the, the sheer type that we're seeing the photographs. Really not generally favorable for very organized, intense supercells, but more kind of like um, multi-cell and splitting cells today. By tomorrow, though, the, that's going to change because by Saturday morning, we have this Boeing line of heavy rainfall and gusty winds that are expected. And then once we go forward, again, by the afternoon hours, this is probably about 2 to 3 in the afternoon central time, we are going to see more eruption of intense thunderstorms, supercells capable of producing really large hail. And that's over Amarillo, that's over northern Texas, western Texas, even down towards Fort Stockton. We could see some really big hailers tomorrow. Once again, four inches could do a lot of damage. Break windshields, break carports, could gut out some roofs and other properties. So really keep that in mind. If you're living all across, or any of you that live in western Texas, like Amarillo, if you're in Wichita Falls, really be careful tomorrow. It is really going to be a very big concern for big hail um, out of this complex of storms. Growing up scale somewhat into more of a linear line by overnight Saturday to Sunday, moving into Dallas, Fort Worth, and Central Texas by about 1 to 2 in the morning for your Saturday. And then that will continue to propagate. But wow. Very intense line of storms, a very active day tomorrow for sure. And then that continues all the way into early in the morning hours for your Saturday. And actually, this is Sunday, excuse me. Tomorrow is Saturday. Uh, this is Sunday uh, morning. Oh my gosh, got my days mixed up. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, but yeah, Sunday early morning, Boeing line, and then Sunday late morning, early afternoon, then that really transitions into more convective structuring by Sunday afternoon, right around two to three o'clock. But that's not the only risk of severe weather that you will be dealing with, both for today and tomorrow. It is also gonna continue for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and potentially Thursday. A string of severe weather days are anticipated. And therefore, let's look at the latest Euro model. This is the European Media, uh, European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. Does a pretty good job at this. And so what we are going to have on Monday morning, the start of the period, we have a pretty deep surface low over Montana and Wyoming. At the start of the period, we're going to have showers and thunderstorms that do develop over the Dakotas. And some snow, believe it or not, in early May. Yes, this is a winter storm, a very significant winter storm, nevertheless, with winds, snow, and cooler temperatures. And then once we get into the afternoon hours for Monday, this is 21Z, so this is going to be about 3 to 4 in the afternoon for Central Time. 
we're going to start seeing some severe weather uh, outbreak potentially setting up across Kansas, Nebraska, and southward, and even for portions there of South Dakota, because we have a cold front and dry line that is going to be pretty sharp over the high plains and then moisture is going to stream northward. And you'll see that here when I show you the dew point. But this is going to continue. Look at this really bowing out. A very classic comma-shaped storm. So very organized, strong winds. All severe hazards are expected, including the potential for strong tornadoes. Yes, I repeat, strong tornadoes are possible on Tuesday, Monday into Tuesday with that event. And then we could see a resurgence of showers and thunderstorms by the time we go into, say, Tuesday afternoon into the evening hours. While there's a little bit of uncertainty in regards to how this is going to all evolve, any storm on Tuesday that does develop here, because we have another surface slow, we could see a strong tornado and some really large hail as well, especially over this portion of uh, the High Plains and the Deep South. Whereas Monday's threat is going to be mainly over here. So I'm going to kind of circle these areas. This is where we're going to see the best chances for significant severe weather on Monday. Now, when it comes to the jet stream forecast, this is why we're going to see that severe weather event unfold on Monday and Tuesday and even into Wednesday. But also we have some severe weather to contend with today. And that's because we do have a little bit of a jet maximum moving and evacuating into Texas, so it, you know, more like ejecting off the Edwards Plateau today, and that's going to set the stage again for the next couple of days, today and tomorrow especially, we're going to have to contend with severe weather and potentially even into Sunday over southern Texas because of this little ripple in the flow that we're dealing with. But the big storm is really out west here in California, very strong trough that is in Northern California. Look at this jet streak right here. Over 90 knots um, ejecting or evacuating into um, California and even into Nevada. And that's going to be the beast, folks, that's going to get us some serious, severe weather. And let's go actually forward in time of how this is going to all evolve. So this is Sunday morning. This is Monday morning. And we can see there's the trough. This is going to become negatively tilted. It's already negatively tilted by this point, but it's going to get only more negatively tilted with time once it gets into the high plains. And look at this really, really intense trough here, very negatively tilted. Now, there is some spread in the model guidance on exactly how this is going to all evolve. In other words, if we look at the GFS model, uh, looking at the same system, we can see how this is going to all shape up. There's your system uh, over California at that point, very well modeled, but the GFS has more of a, uh, a very strong speed max uh, moving into the high plains during this period, during the 21Z. And you can see that by looking at the uh, speed max over here across, say, Kansas and Nebraska. And if that is able to develop, we could see a more substantial risk, possibly a tornado outbreak over uh, portions of western Kansas and central and western Nebraska, because that's where we have a lot of left exit region flow. That's where we have a lot of lift that is going to be extrapolated over a wider area. So uh, again, a little bit of uncertainty there. A lesser concerning threat on the Euro versus the GFS has a more worrisome, possibly uh, multiple significant hail events exceeding three, four inches, tornadoes, possibly EF2 plus, and damaging wind gusts exceeding 75, perhaps 80 miles an hour over that area. So now looking at the Euro as far as moisture goes, because we have a lot of moisture out there right now, dew points are in the upper 50s to mid 60s across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. But once we go forward, we can see all of this moisture is going to be advecting northward in time for this outbreak of severe weather setting up. Look how dry this air is over New Mexico into Western Texas. Dew points by the afternoon hours, really going to be sharp. I mean, we're talking dew points in the negative territory in northern Texas versus on the eastern side of the dry line. We have dew points in the mid to upper 60s, 
perhaps even some mid 70s down here in Texas. So this is a very rich, warm, moist air mass that is going to be in place over the Midwest and the Deep South for Monday into Tuesday. And that's going to help to uh, increase instability. And we have another shock because again, that, uh, that dry line is gonna be there. We have a lot of moisture. Again, dew points in the mid 70s, very uncomfortable, muggy, warm, sticky kind of thing. So now this is gonna contribute to a lot of instability, uh, especially over the next couple of days, mainly in Texas where we have surface base cape and mixed layer cape that is thunderstorm juice, that is energy for thunderstorms. Uh, we're looking at moderate to uh, strong instability over the next couple of days here in Texas. And once we get into uh, Monday, that instability is gonna invect northward part of that low level jet that comes in off the Gulf of Mexico and moves into Texas and Oklahoma by 21Z Monday. And this is gonna be the culprit for that severe weather event, a substantial outbreak perhaps of severe weather um, for this day and surf, uh, mixed layer cape on the order of two to 3,000 joules will certainly be more than suitable for an organized day. And then uh, more significant instability potentially setting up for uh, Tuesday and Wednesday across Texas along that boundary. And then some of that could re uh, resurge even further north here, uh, like Dallas, maybe almost up to 5,000 joules of uh, juice uh, for the day on uh, Thursday and Friday. Therefore, the Storm Prediction Center has introduced a an enhanced risk for severe weather for today for Western Texas. Again, we looked at the high resolution rapid refresh model showing a lot of discrete cells in this area. Potentially an isolated strong tornado is a very slight possibility in the middle of this enhanced risk today with a slight risk for severe weather over uh, Western Kansas. Again, this is driven by Again, a 5% chance for tornadoes over western Texas with a 2% risk for tornadoes over northwestern Texas, western Kansas, and western Oklahoma. And then for your day one wind outlook, there is a 15 sig for uh, damaging wind gusts for today uh, over central and western Texas and a 15 non sig over Kansas. This is mainly hail driven enhanced risk for today with a 30 sig for hailstones greater than two to three, maybe four inches. Some isolated events may be tempting to reach five inches in diameter in this enhanced risk. That would really be enough to cause extensive damage, property damage, and roof damage as well with hailstones that are this big. But that's not it. There is a level three severe weather risk and enhanced for Western Texas again for day two in the same area with a slight risk surrounding that. This is once again driven by a 10 sig for tornadoes. Now, not a five, but a 10 sig for tornadoes. That means a strong tornado is certainly a possibility in the Fort Stockton area and to the north during the day tomorrow. And this is a 15 uh, non sig for damaging winds. And yet again, we could see hailers up to three to four inches in diameter. So big hailstones, giant ones for Western Texas and perhaps even for portions there of say near Austin, Texas, Amarillo, as well as um, Abilene, Texas. Definitely need to be uh, on, on guard and on the lookout for significant severe weather tomorrow, but that's not it. Day four features an enhanced risk for severe weather. That is a 30% risk for severe weather for day four, and that's the highest they go this far out in time for northern Oklahoma into Kansas and southern Nebraska for the day on day four. And again, that really covers where I think we're going to have the severest weather because of that low level jet, that moisture advection, that instability that is going to be in place east of the dry line, a sharpening dry line here. We might even see a dry line bulge out into, uh, say, western Kansas, and that could really augment things or more significant severe weather supercells that could be long tracked and intense. There's a day five slight risk for severe weather. Again, for these areas, mainly down here in Texas and possibly stretching all the way up into Illinois and Indiana. So we're looking at a whole entire week, folks. I mean, we're going all the way, say, uh, from the beginning of the week, that's Sunday. We're looking at severe weather Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And if that's not enough, 
We're also looking at severe weather into Thursday as well for Texas, for Oklahoma, for the Arklatex area for day six. That's the um, the furthest the slight risk goes out in their outlook. Uh, they have a day seven, day eight, but there's no um, highlight of anything that far out. But I just wanted to tell you all that we might even see a day uh, when they update. We might see an additional slight risk in later outlooks for the next day six update. That would uh, be for uh, Thursday and a Friday, uh, which would be a concern. So definitely we got to really watch this week very, very closely. Looking very active uh, with tornadoes, damaging winds, and large hail. We have seen enough of that already since last Saturday and last Thursday when we had a historic tornado outbreak up here into the northern high plains which was very devastating, and I just, my hearts and my thoughts go out to all of you that had to deal with these strong tornadoes up here. Unfortunately, we're not done, as we are going to see more coming. So the extensive or excessive rainfall outlook also highlights a slight risk for more heavy rain and flooding. There is a moderate risk of flooding down here in Houston, um, but tomorrow's outlook is this. We have a sl slight risk, and then Actually, if, if day one updated and day one didn't, because that's today's outlook. And then here is day two. And then here is day three. Um, so right now, actually, they updated this. This is actually a little bit bigger now. So there's a slight risk now covers eastern Texas and central Texas with a day three slight risk for heavy rainfall and flooding. So Lots of rain, lots of severe weather, lots to talk about because of the uh, storm system that's over California this weekend will be sloshing eastward rapidly this weekend and early next week to produce a prolific severe weather outbreak, again, consisting of strong tornadoes, some of which could even be intense and long tracked, and of course, very large to giant hailstones up to four inches in diameter, perhaps, and then of course, damaging winds up to or greater than 75 miles an hour. I really want you all to um, share this video with your family and friends on social media because again, this is looking pretty significant. Well, anyways, before I do end the video, I do have a couple announcements to share with you all. First of all, my Wednesday, May 21st at 3 p.m., that's a third Atlantic hurricane seasonal outlook will be released on Wednesday for right now. It could be canceled just depending on uh, other factors that get involved. So we will see about that. But right now it looks like it is still on schedule for release on May 21st. And then of course, uh, my first routine tropical weather outlook will be on May 25th and runs through November 1st. Definitely don't want to miss that. Also, be sure you do subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks. You guys are really awesome. We are not at 18.9 thousand subscribers. We're in fact at 19.3 thousand subscribers. We're very close to that, folks. So thank you all for your diligent, awesome support. Um, go, me going this far and making these videos for you all. And also be sure to check out my Twitter page. There will be a link in the description below this video along to go with my Discord server where you can join today. It is 100% free to become a subscriber to the YouTube channel and to join Weather Force. There is no cost whatsoever. But until next time, folks. But anyways, I will be back with you more soon.